Hi everyone, Flaming Footy here, and welcome or welcome back to a new video on the channel. And today, guys, here I am to continue my AFL 2023 three game match reviews. And in today's video, going to be reviewing the middle three games from round 23. Those games were GWS vs. Essendon, St. Kilda vs. Geelong, and Adelaide vs. Sydney. And these games are huge for how the final top eight will play out. GWS recorded their highest ever score in club history, smashing Essendon by 126 points in the Saturday twilight yesterday. And it was GWS 25-12-162 that smashed Essendon 5-6-36 by 126 points. Essendon, they're, they're just whole, they just didn't rock up. It's fair to say they just did not rock up today. The Giants kicked seven goals to one in the opening quarter. Uh, the Bombers did kick um, the second goal of the match to be 6-all. But yeah, from there, it was just, they were gone. Uh, seven goals won the first, and as I said, the Giants had 13 goals on the board by half time, was 13 goals to two. The game was over at quarter time, realistically, but half time uh, mathematically. And then, yeah, in the third quarter, seven more goals to two. And then the final quarter, five to one. So a pretty comfortable beating here for the Giants. And it was off one man, Jesse Hogan. This has got to be one of the highest rated fantasy performances of the year. 188 fantasy and included nine goals, one, 24 disposals, 17 marks, four tackles. Disposal efficiency of 79%. That's that's huge. That's huge numbers there. He had a brilliant game. 120 fantasy for Tom Green, 116 for Ward, 114 for Himmelberg, 104 for Cornelio, 103 for Perryman, 102 for Whitfield, 100 for McGrath. Goals behind. Nine goals for Hogan, as I said. Career best for Jesse Hogan. He just had it too easy. Three for Bedford. Uh, sorry, three for Daniels, two for Bedford, two for Toby Green, two for Langford. Disposals 39 for Tom Green, 32 for McGrath, 31 for Cornelio, 30 for Himmelberg, Kelly, Whitfield and Ward, Mark, 17 for Hogan, 8 for Himmelberg, 7 for Iden, Whitfield and Ward, Tackles, 7 for Perryman, Parrish and Hobbs, Hitouts, 22 for Briggs, 15 for Draper, 13 for Phillips, 7 for Keith. Team stats now where it was a smashing of inside 50s for the Giants, 70 to 41, that's just a demolition, they had Waymer at the footy than Essendon as well. Um, they won stoppage clearance 29 to 16. The Bombers did win centre clearance, believe it or not. Um, they won contested and contested footy as well. Did the Giants smash them in marks? Marks inside 50, 19 to 7, so just a huge win there. Uh, 13 to 5 contested marks, led for the whole game. And yeah, what a good win this is for the Giants. It keeps their season well and truly alive. Looks like the Saints will be marching into September in, t in 2023. Uh, what a win this is for St Kilda by 33 points over uh, the reigning premiers Geelong who are out of the finals. It is a very weird thing to say. Uh, try saying Geelong are not in the finals and it will definitely feel a little bit weird because uh, yeah, they've been. This is such a common place for them to be the finals for so long and this year they're not going to be in there and they just got absolutely beaten out of the middle in this game by the better side. St Kilda 12 16 88 to Geelong 8 7 55. St Kilda in by 33 had a whole heap of scoring shots and which is a much better side in the end. Four goals to two in the opening term. The Saints got off to a good start in the second term. The Cats did claw it back a little bit. Two goals apiece though. Uh, but yeah, the Saints were still leading at half time. In the third quarter, that's where the game got a little bit out of reach. It was, only, it was three goals to two, but it was three goals, six to two goals, one. Everything was just going the Saints way. And then the final quarter, three goals to two continue. Um, yeah, continues on the Saints on their merry way into September. 141 fantasy for Marshall, 136 for Sinclair, 133 for Stewart, 122 for Hill, 115 for Steele and Duncan, 105 for Wood, 103 for Atkins, 101 for Tui, 100 for Crouch. Goals behind, three goals for King, two for Higgins, Hawkins, Butler and Sharman. Disposals, 38 for Sinclair, 31 for Hill, 30 for Stewart, 29 for Crouch, 27 for Steele and Duncan. 14 marks for Wilkie, 13 for Hill and Stewart, 11 for Wood, Windhager, Duncan, 10 for Sinclair, Marshall uh, and Guthrie, 9 for Wanganay, Miller and Bowes, tons of marks. Tackles, 9 for Atkins, 7 for Steele, hitouts, 28 for Marshall, 6 for uh, Neil, 4 for Hawkins and DeConing, 3 for Owens. Team stats now. And the inside 50s won by St. Kilda, 59 to 41. So, again, pretty comfortable there. Had way more of the footy as well. And, uh, yeah, if you go inside 50 more times, of course you're going to score. Uh, and uh, as I did say, they won out of clearance here, 33 to 21 total clearances, 15 to 8 centre clearances. So, absolutely smashing the Cats out of the middle, 18 to 13 stoppage clearances. They won contested footy and uncontested footy. They won marks. Marks inside 50, 20 to 9. So, the Saints are winning all these statistical areas. They led for the whole game. Despite the Cats laying more tackles, what a win this is for the Saints. And this pretty much, I believe, 
uh, sees them into finals because they've hit the magical 13 win mark now. Adelaide season comes to an end in the worst possible way due to an umpire blunder with the post at the end of the game. They did not call for a review on it. It was very controversial, but it was clear, uh, clear as day that the um yeah that the ball did not hit the post. And Adelaide go out like the Sydney win by a point. Adelaide 10 13 73 to Sydney 11 8 74. It has been the story of Adelaide's season not being able to kick straight in big games like this and. It did come back to haunt them and cost them again. And look, Sydney with a much better side, though. They did play really good footy for the first half. It was a game of two halves, really. Uh, Sydney dominant for the first half. Adelaide were dominant for the final quarter because in that third quarter, not really a lot happened. Uh, the margin was 32 at half time. It stayed that way at three-quarter time. Adelaide did come surging home. But again, though, four goals out in the last quarter. When you want to win a game of footy, you got to kick straighter than that. And even though it did come down to the umpire's decision at the end of the day, but there were a couple of costly errors in that last quarter in terms of goal kicking, which did let Adelaide down. But yeah, the start definitely, when you already put yourself back by uh, four or five kicks early on in the game, it does make life difficult. Um, but yeah, they're not going to be playing finals footy anymore. Sydney extend their winning streak to, I think it's six in a row now or five in a row, something crazy like that. They're in red hot form along with Carlton. Uh, and it pretty much looks like they're going to have a spot in the top eight now as well. Still got a big game next week, but it looks like they will probably end up having a spot in there, especially if they do get the win next week. 118 fancy for Laird, 107 for Golden, 102 for Saligo, 101 for Crouch. Goals behind, three goals for Heaney, who was unstoppable. Two for Rochelle and Walker, two for McLean as well. Disposals, 31 for Laird, 30 for Golden, 28 for Saligo, 26 for Crouch. Mark, seven for Smith, six for Crouch. Tackles. Uh, 8 for Dawson, Laird and Rowbottom, 7 for McAdam and Sloan, hitouts 49 for O'Brien who's having a great year, 29 for Hickey, 8 for McLean, 7 for Walker, 5 for Thilthorpe, team stats now is Adelaide, the one inside 50 is 58 to 54, they did really fix up that area in the second half, uh, they won centre clearances 15 to 7, they really did get on top of that area towards the later end of the game as well, uh, contested possessions were locked, Adelaide won, won uncontested footy, uh, they won marks and marks inside 50, uh, but it was a sloppier game. Uh, as to why there weren't so many marks. Um, Sydney did lead for most of the game, and they were leading by as much as um, 44 at one stage. The tackle numbers are always high uh, when it's two good pressure sides going head-to-head, 81-85. to Sydney won it, uh, and then tackles inside 50, 18-17. Adelaide won it. So in the end, it was Sydney that won the game by one point and won the games of the season. All right, so what have we had so far? Brisbane defeated Collingwood by 24 on the Friday night. First game, Saturday, Richmond defeated North by 29 to see off their retiring players, Cochran and Revolt. Uh, Carlton defeated Gold Coast by four points at Heritage Bank Stadium. GWS smashed Essendon by 126 points. St Kilda defeated Geelong by 33. And then uh, Sydney defeated Adelaide by one point. Of course, that umpire uh, did not make the right call there. But anyway, though, of course, things do go on. Got more fixtures today, more big fixtures today, and well, now this does open the door for the Western Bulldogs, considering that Adelaide will not be an issue percentage now. This is their opportunity. They've got to gain percentage today, and you feel like they've got to gain a lot of it as well. They just need to, just to have it in the back of their minds, uh, and a big game next week versus the Cats, which will be very interesting, but of course, they've got this one first against the Eagles at Marvel. Uh, then the Pink Lady game, Sunday Channel 7 game, is Melbourne and Hawthorne at the MCG. Carlton can still make the top four, but... Uh, if Melbourne win today, that is them done. But the Hawks, they're unpredictable. You never know what they're going to do. And I have a feeling they will bring their best and it'll probably be a decent contest. And then to finish off the round, Fremantle take on Port Adelaide in the West, which this is an absolute must for Port to keep their top two hopes alive. Uh, and they're playing Freo. So we'll go to the ladder now. We'll see what's happened here. So, of course, Brisbane are getting closer to first. Uh, with it, with Collingwood playing Essendon, which we'll have a look at the round 24 fixtures soon, uh, it probably does mean that Collingwood shall finish first. Now, Port Adelaide, they've still got the game in hand. They've got a win today. Um, yeah, they've got a win. If they want to keep their top two hopes alive, they're going to have to win, and they're going to have to hope Brisbane lose next week because uh, or they're going to have to win and get a whole heap of percentage in the next couple of weeks, like winning by probably 100-plus points on both occasions, which will be pretty tough to do. Uh, and then... Carlton, they can still win if Mel like they can still get into top four if Melbourne lose both their games and they win against the Giants next week, which what a big game that'll be. Uh, St Kilda in sixth, they're on fifty two points. It is very unlikely that they are going to get knocked out from here. I think it can still happen, but I think they're pretty much in the finals, especially with um, yeah, the Dogs having the Cats in round twenty four in Geelong, 
and the Giants having a big game against the Rampage in Carlton. Sydney play Melbourne next week, which is going to be a huge fixture. And then Essendon are still mathematically alive, but need to make up a ton of percent. So I really feel like we've got the clubs which are in the eight and the Western Bulldogs left in this race now. We started the round having 12 clubs, and now we've finished with nine left in the equation. Uh, of course, if the Cats and the Crows had have won, it would have changed everything again. But considering now that every, like Essendon realistically out, Geelong, they're not going to be playing finals this year. Richmond aren't going to be playing finals. Adelaide aren't going to be. Uh, and then, of course, we, we've known for a little while, Free, Fremantle, Gold Coast, Hawthorne, North and West Coast will not be playing finals. So, realistic, mathematically, 10 teams, realistically, 9 teams left in the finals hunt. Feel free to let me know which team you think will get into the finals. So, now we go to round 24. So I'd be heavily assumed the Dogs will win. So this one, of course, it's still going to be a big Friday night clash though between Essendon and Collingwood. It's going to be packed out crowd. Uh, North Melbourne, Gold Coast, Hawthorne, Freo don't have the same things. Now this one is going to be huge. Brisbane and St Kilda, such a huge game. And uh, the Brisbane are undefeated at the Gabba this year. So huge opportunity for the Saints to go up there and snare a win. And what a big win it would be. It would definitely ensure that they do get into finals. And for Brisbane, it would lock up a top two spot. This is just a huge game on the Saturday night still, even though the Cats won't be playing in finals. They're so good in Geelong. And they've got the Western Bulldogs. Uh, West Coast and Adelaide now becomes um, yeah becomes nothing on the Saturday night as well. Port Adelaide, Richmond, still going to be huge for Port Adelaide's top two hopes. And this Sunday is looking even better now. Sydney take on Melbourne. Red Hot Sydney against a good Melbourne side, the SCG. And then Carlton and Giants finish it off. And uh, yeah, always knew this one was going to be a big one in round 24. And of course, with some other results happening, it just got even bigger. So feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments section on these games. And yeah, finals race, things are heating up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please do make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. See you guys never see another video on the channel. Thank you guys so much. Bye everyone. Flame footy out.